Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. We've just gone through an incredibly difficult season, and I think it's going to take some time for us to adjust uh, from that. But today was amazing. Just a wonderful morning of worship and um it just was such a blessing to gather today the way that we did and so i am grateful to our lord do you think this newfound return to normal is going to stick well premier kenny is certainly saying all the right things i mean the 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 premier that we elected and and that we saw a year ago uh seems to be back uh, what happened in the interim, I, I don't know. But um, I, I realize that, you know, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame, or I guess it's the other way around. But, um, but I'm just going to be optimistic. I, I think we've learned what we needed to learn as far as COVID-19 is, is, uh, is concerned. And so I, I, I want to be optimistic that we're not going to lock down in the fall. Sheila Gunn-Reed for Rebel News, and I'm reporting today from exactly the spot where the government fences used to stand here at Grace Life Church, west of Edmonton, Alberta. This church property behind me was seized approximately three months ago by the province of Alberta for COVID non-compliance. Now, that church property seizure happened after the pastor here, James Coates, spent 35 days in jail for COVID non-compliance. His crime at the time not turning away his congregants to meet an arbitrary 15% cap on church attendance to comply with public health orders. The church was officially returned to the congregation July 1st after it was seized in early April and turned into an RCMP compound replete with three layers of fencing and tarping to obscure that this was ever a church in the first place. Oh, and porta potties for the mall cops stationed here 24 hours a day that were located on the sidewalk. So today, Sunday, July 4th, Independence Day for our American friends. It's the day the Grace Life Congregation obtained independence from the province of Alberta that has told them how they should worship for the last 15 or 16 months. So far, the crowd here has been the largest I've ever seen, and I spent months here documenting how they met in defiance of government restrictions, but in obedience to God. The church has a full lobby. Hi, a full lobby, a full upstairs. There's tents outside with a sound system to accommodate everybody who wants to come here today and worship. Now, after services, I caught up with Pastor James Coates about the return of the Grace Life Congregation to their building. Take a listen. Pastor Coates, first week back in the church since it was returned to you, after it was seized by the province for 90, 90 days. Your church spent three times as long in jail as you did. <laughs> What's the feeling like? I, it was pretty joyous for me. What was it like? Well, I've got to be honest, coming to church today for the first time in, I believe, seven months, when we didn't need to be concerned about the fear of um, enforcement from the governing authorities, was different. And, um, and so even leading up to today, um, I was wrestling in my heart with just the level of excitement that wasn't there and, and wondering what is that and, and why am I not more thrilled about this? And I, I can't ultimately put my finger on that except to say that we've just gone through an incredibly difficult season and I think it's going to take some time for us to adjust uh, from that. But today was amazing. Just a wonderful morning of worship. And um, it just was such a blessing to gather today the way that we did. And so I am grateful to our Lord. It was for me a return to normal. And I don't know what it was like before, but I didn't realize how abnormal some of the things were. For example, to see your deacons and your elders who I've come to know worshiping with their families mm. because before they used to have to guard the door for the cops and Alberta Health Services and the media, um, but they were with their families. And I realized how strange this must have been that now they can return to worship the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, I think this was um, a huge dose of normality for for in a lot of ways. I mean, even the offering, you know, we we haven't taken up an offering since I think prior to the onset of COVID-19. 
And, uh, and so, you know, Pastor Jacob Spence, he, uh, we, we said, we're going to do the offering on, on Sunday. And, and the offering really is an expression of worship. I mean, you know, people can still give even without that, that offering time that we have in our service. But that is an act of worship where we, where we give to the Lord out of what he's entrusted to us. So anyway, Jacob, uh, he hadn't even seen how we do that. So he was just like, how do you guys do that? And uh, so you got to see that today. So yeah, today was a wonderful do- dose of normality. I mean, we, we, we have lived a very normal life mm-hmm. apart from the fact that we've had to anticipate the possibility of uh, legal enforcement, but uh, our gatherings have been really normal for a long time. So whereas a lot of churches are coming back to normality in a way that they haven't experienced at all for the last year or so. Uh, we've been doing this the entire time almost. So, um, but it was wonderful to be here and, and for those guys to be able to be with their families again uh, was uh, a rich blessing. You know, I'm glad that you mentioned Pastor Jacob because I think he's one of the unsung heroes in all mm. of this. And I, I think some of that, and maybe that's my fault, it gets glossed over. You ended up in jail for 35 days for refusing to obey the government over God and your obligations as a pastor. Jacob Spence stepped up to that pulpit the very next week, didn't skip a beat, knowing he could full well end up right beside you in jail or next cell. I don't know. You guys could start a band. Um, But I think people have sort of missed his bravery in all of this. Yeah. I mean... You know, had he and I been in jail together, we could have had some sweet fellowship. (laughs) Um, But yeah, the courage he showed in particular that first Sunday, he had no idea what the outcome of that was going to be. And I remember being in prison and I was thinking about Jacob. I was thinking about Tim and thankfully Pastor Tim's out now too, Mm -hmm. praise God. Um, And just praying for these men. And, And I was praying for them at that time and, and, really didn't want them to have to suffer my fate. I was hoping that by going to prison, I'd keep them out. That didn't work out in Tim's case. But in Jacob's case, the courage he showed that first Sunday and and each Sunday thereafter Mm -hmm. was amazing. And so, yeah, the resolve, the, the unsung hero, absolutely. Amen. Yeah. Now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about... I guess the recent international spotlight that's shining on you again um, with the statements from Josh Hawley Hmm. and Ron DeSantis and uh, Scott Walker, you know, these prominent conservative American politicians are seeing what's happening in Alberta or what has happened in Alberta as a serious problem with religious freedom and fundamental human rights. And yet here in Canada, we're not seeing really any pushback from those within the mainstream conservative movement. What's going on there? Well, I don't know. Um, I am incredibly thankful for the attention the U.S. has given to this. Josh Hawley, I believe you said it was Scott Walker, Mm -hmm. Ron DeSantis. I mean, so good to see the U.S. weighing in on this. And um, I don't know. I mean, I... We have gotten word that uh, on, on Credible Witness, Tyler Shandro is the, the aggressor behind uh, all that has come against churches. And, and so whether that's true or not, uh, I don't know ultimately. I don't know why Premier Kenny allowed that to take place if he wasn't the aggressor. And I'm not sure why we haven't seen more of an uprising among our, our, our politicians that are in power to, to demonstrate their conservative values. But, you know, this is a wonderful day. And, um, and rather than um, highlight that, mm-hmm. I think we're all just thankful to get back to normal. And Lord willing, uh, things will remain normal, even heading into flu season in the fall. Here's hoping. Um, now, it, do you have a message for the politicians or or the people who are involved in what happened to you and to the other churches um you were saying off camera that you'd like to extend a bit of an olive branch well i think that um it would be beneficial for them to um 
I mean, ultimately, we are a forgiving people. I can speak for Pastor Tim Stevens. Uh, he is a forgiving man. And our desire is to have a good, healthy uh, relationship with our governing authorities and, and with our politicians. And so um, our door is certainly open. Uh, I get the sense that uh, we might not receive a warm welcome if we were to reach out. But I think Premier Kenny can just know that um, our our door is wide open and we'd be happy to sit down with him and see if we can't navigate a pathway forward into the future that is more uh, productive for Albertans. One final question. Do you think this newfound return to normal is going to stick? Well, Premier Kenny is certainly saying all the right things. I mean, the 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 premier that we elected and and that we saw a year ago uh, seems to be back. Uh, what happened in the interim? I, I don't know. But um, I, I realize that, you know, fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. Shame. Or I guess it's the other way around. But um, but I'm just going to be optimistic. I, I think we've learned what we needed to learn as far as COVID-19 is is uh, is concerned. And so I, I, I want to be optimistic that we're not going to lock down in the fall. And even if we do, what happens here at Grace Life? Well, our doors are going to remain open. I mean, this is um, this is this is our calling. This is uh, this is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So. Yeah, I mean, nothing's going to change about about the way that we uh, conduct ourselves going forward. Pastor Coates, I want to thank you for your time. Um, I've taken you away from your congregation who are probably lined up outside still to talk to you. Um, I, I just appreciate your resolve and your stand for um, religious freedom and the right of Christians to obey God above the government. Well, Sheila, thank you for just representing us and, and being a steward of our message and giving us a, a place that we can feel confident that, um, that we, can, we can give our story and it's gonna be reflected as is. And so we're thankful for you and, and, uh, and we're just thankful to, to have this moment to honor and glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the media doesn't care about this place anymore because there's nothing to see here. There's no bloodlust for Christians to satiate. Before the media found this group of Christians being biblically obedient, somehow exotic and weird. Why couldn't they just listen to the government in spite of their own consciences? Are the days of conservative governments locking up Christian pastors for meeting their pastoral obligations to their congregations finally over? I guess that remains to be seen probably the next flu season. But the stench of what Jason Kenney's conservative government did to Grace Life and Fairview Baptist, James Coates, Tim Stevens, Art Pulaski. Well, I don't think that's going to go away anytime soon. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Pastor James Coates here at Grace Life is being represented by the great lawyers at the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. Here at Rebel News, we are helping Art Pulaski in Calgary with his legal fees through our partnership with the registered Canadian charity, the Democracy Fund, to help us help Pastor Art. Please donate today at savearter.com. That's save, A-R-T-U-R, -R, the Polish spelling, savearter.com.